Um, welcome to the last lecture of C++ from like this series. And today, um, today's focus is more practical, and uh, it's a bit shorter and it's a bit it's a bit easier than the stuff we have done before. So today we're just gonna talk a bit about containers, how to use them, and about um, algorithms, um, or more C++ algorithms to be more specific. And um, right, so containers, what are containers? Containers are data types in C++ which contain data, basically. <laughs> um, there's this thing called the STL, which means Standard Template Library. Um, which is a which is basically a standard library uh, of the C++ language, and this here is the like uh, the documentation of it, and we're gonna look at some stuff. So here the containers library, so called, and first we're gonna take a look at std array and std vector. Okay, so to include arrays and vectors, we have to do this. And we'll start with std array. Okay, so we had thing we had seen in the past things like this. Okay, so equals uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? But then we could print them with like a basic for loop and i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus, and in, in this loop body actually just std c out array. I and like that. So if you run this, it'll print one, two, three, four, five. All right. So um, what std array is? It's an abstract. It's a type like this std array array, and um, it's a templated type. So in this brackets in here, we have to say like first the type, so we're gonna use int, and second the size. That, that's a special thing about std array. Um, here we specify the size. Okay, so I don't know why I did three. I'll just do this five and I'll do just the same thing. It's not really the same but like practically it is practically. If I print this it'll work the same way as before and print everything. But um, we prefer std array to normal arrays for um, a few reasons. One, one reason is that it's safe, safer, let's say. Okay, so this is not the safest way, but if I do add i, this is the same thing as using the bracket operator. And now if I do something like this, okay, so this is like a classic mistake, like a typo. If I do this, then terminate call of a throwing instance of stood out of range. What array at yada yada. Um, so it's safer in the way that if we access an element which doesn't exist with at, if we had used um, the brackets and it wouldn't work, then it'll throw an exception instead of possibly doing uh, like instead of invoking undefined behavior and stuff like that. So that's one way why it is useful. And the other way is because it provides us with some really useful functions. So it's the algorithm, let me here. So here we can see it has the add and operator. Uh, this is, this, uh, we use this to access the elements. It has front and back and data. But um, the two most useful things are, the most useful thing is here, size. So size we can use size to see out array dot size right so we can check the size of an array like oh yeah still that's an error this still and I'm gonna do an end line in here so but we can actually use that to get the size and there's no real good way of doing this with normal arrays. So that's the first one. Um, looking at it again, and the second one is actually these here. So, um, 
this is what I wanted to get to is iterators. Before we talk about any more uh, stuff, I want to take a brief. Um, I want to show you a brief introduction to iterators. So, what are iterators? In the last lectures, to, in the, the two last lectures, we talked a bit about pointers, and we talked a bit about pointer arithmetic. So, what iterators are? They are an ab abstraction of pointers. So there are types which behave like pointers but are better because first of all they can be made safe um, and second for example if you have um, we're going to talk about this but if you have a stood list I would need to include list to have it actually include list a stood list of ints list like this then a list is not contiguous in memory, meaning that the first element of a list may be like thousands of uh, bytes away from the uh, second member and stuff like that. But using iterators, we can iterate over them. So what does it mean to iterate over them? Okay, so um, let's look at an example with a C array. So int C array five equals one one two three four five. Okay, so now we can do what we basically can do is that int pointer begin equals C that's the first pointer and C array and then begin is smaller, the address is smaller than uh, C array plus six. Uh, this address here doesn't actually exist, like there's nothing in it as far as we are concerned, but we can use it to check like this. Or, and then we can do begin plus plus plus. And then we could just print to see out uh, begin. So this code in here is really not that great because it's really error prone. Um, yeah, let's just wait for Repli to to cooperate with us. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think we might have to wait. A Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, w we see why it's bad because I made a mistake and now it printed like something like this. So now we see why it's bad. That just could have as well been a sec fault. Okay. So y these are pointers, but with standard types. So if I do std array int 5. Um, array just r equals one two three four five okay so now I can use iterators so I'll just use auto because the full type is would be stood array in five iterator yada yada so you can just use this I'll use this begin equals array dot begin uh, begin smaller than array dot end so this end thing is important and I'll tell you why in the short bit and begin plus plus so now I can do basically the same thing but much better Um, yeah, and by the way, if there are any questions, it'll probably take me a while to see them, so don't think I don't care, and I don't answer them. Okay, so, um, this does the same thing, but uh, with iterators, um, which are safer, and this end is, you can think of this end to be like in here, but it actually doesn't really exist, okay, so, here is the end. But they, the end is, it's not a real value, it's just 
something we use to signify the end. So there's this doesn't have an actual value, dereferencing end. So if I do, right, so um, let me show it to you. If I actually do something like stutzy out array dot end like this, um, it might print something, it might suck fault, but it's undefined and it's illegal. Okay, zero. So in this case, zero. If I run it again, it maybe we'll have a different value. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, it's not defined, really. It's undefined. All right. So, so iterators, and we can do one better than this crazy four. Um, we can use range based for loops, so called which do like the syntax of that is just okay so int i in array so this colon in here means in and this is a range based for loop or you could call it a for each loop and i'll just quickly show what it does okay so it'll do absolutely the same um but it's a shorter way, it's safer, and it's more useful, and we could do auto in here too. And we can actually use this to change the original array if you use a reference. Okay, so just copy this, and I'll do copy this twice. Okay, so in here we'll, I'll just comment, in here we'll print, in here we'll change, after that we're gonna print again. Print. So if we here instead of the type or auto then reference, then we can actually do something like i equals zero. So if I run this and let's do a line break in between to make it obvious. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so that is the idea of range based for loops, and I'll just quick look if there are any questions so far. Questions? I'll just go. Okay, so no questions so far. Um, okay, so you can continue. So um, that's the idea of iterators. Um, we can, there are different kinds of iterators. So, if we'll, yeah, if um, I'll just keep that array, and uh, there's also something called reverse iterators, and you can imagine what those are. So, if I do auto, e, normally we use something like it to signify iterator, equals r dot r begin so this means reverse begin it is smaller than uh, r dot r end and it plus plus so let's see stud stud c out et it so it should print 5 of 81. See? Yes. So reverse iterators are really just um, iterators, but in reverse. So this R begin is the last element, or is an iterator to the last element. And this R end is basically in here, like R end. But again, it doesn't have any value, and dereferencing, dereferencing it is illegal. Okay. So. Uh, let's so this is it basically for std array. Um, there are a lot of functions in here. Uh, like the nice thing about the standard library is that they are all consistent. So the names, if if the function exists for a type, the names are gonna be the same. So add is the same for uh, every container which has an add. Front is the same. R begin and C. Yeah, uh, constant iterators. So um, a constant iterator 
is basically the same, but you can't change it. So if I do, for example, um, I'll I'll just do. I'll copy this, right? And in here I'll print, and in here I'll just change. So it equals. We have to use this uh, asterisk because we are dereferencing it. If we were to change uh, the iterator itself, that'd probably be a sec fault, I think. Anyway, so I'll do this. It'll print zero zero zero. Um, but if you do some trigger, uh, let's see begin and see end in here, and the iterator is constant meaning that we can't change the value it points to right so that's basically just constant in just means again as most of the constants in mean in c++ that we can't change something and in this case again yeah, and there's a difference uh important so the difference be between const array and yeah, this is tiresome to write this out. There's a difference in this. These two types are not the same as uh, const iterator. So this here means we can change the value it points to, but we actually cannot change the iterator itself. This means we can like increase this iterator, yada yada, but we can't change the value it points to. Okay, so it's a bit like const int versus const in no sorry versus int const. Okay, so uh, it's the same principle. All right, so let's get to the actual um, actual containers we wanted to talk about. So. The most used container out of all is std vector. And std vector um, is special in that it doesn't have a constant size. So the size can change, we can change it at any time. And it uses dynamic memory allocations and it does that all for us. So let's just see. Vec um, we can give it a but one thing you should know, it always has a size at a certain point, it just we can change the size. So right now it doesn't have any size. So if I do std cout vec dot add zero, then yeah, then it's gonna complain because it actually ha has no size. And I'm pretty certain that if I do this, it'll do a sec fault. Oh, not that. That's not how this operator works. Yeah, segmentation fault. Yeah, so, um, to actually, we can, of course, do something like this. Um, then it actually, now it will have size 5. Okay, so, now we can print it too, so, for just use auto for everything, auto i in vector, stud cout i, okay. Mm -hmm. Again, to get the size, something we use stud cout, yeah, vector size. Okay, so it's gonna print five because that's the size. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot the parentheses. Okay. Okay, so now the uh, size is five, but if you look here in the reference, oh that brightness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, here capacity we have reserve. That's not. We're not gonna talk about that for now, but. Here, resize and uh, these types here. So, resize is very important. So, now if I do vec dot resize 10, and now it's gonna have size 10, and we can, and 
I if I print all, it sh I think it should be zero. Like the ones you haven't assigned are probably gonna be zero, but if not, they're gonna be a random value. The point is now we can access them. So I okay. Okay, so now here are five more zeros. So we can change the, di uh, the size dynamically with resize, but we can also use something different. Um, we can use push back and uh, push front, but push back is better, probably. Yep, no, pretty, oh no, it doesn't really matter. So if he has some size, so in here, if you have this vector, we'll just do a vector with no size, so size zero right now. You can do vector push back all functions in the standard library are snake case like this, so it's all small with underscores. So push back zero vector push back five vector push push back eight and now see out um, size vector size eight okay so now it's gonna be size three right because we push back three values um, this is pretty useful. So, for example, I, I'll do just I'll just show something like int i equals five while i okay. So uh, while i is positive, it's gonna do std c in i and vector push back i. So this is a pretty nonsensical example, but uh, it should show you how you can really leverage the dynamic size of a vector. So, a std c out i. Yeah, okay, so if I run this, then yeah, it's, it's gonna ask for input. So, 5, 6, 3, 1, 2, yada yada. We can do like anything you want, but if I do 0, then it'll end and it'll print anything. So, okay, so that's the basics of a vector. I'm not gonna talk about list because uh, you won't use, uh, it has far less use cases than general vectors. So like uh, arrays in JavaScript and stuff like that, so it's a bad example. But I mean, m most languages where you have like arrays which are like dynamic, and Python for example, and stuff like that, um, that's like a vector in C++. So, another useful thing is a map. Stood map, and a map again has a template. Uh, map, and I think in Python you'd call them dictionaries. And basically you have a, it works like this, key value. Okay, so, this key can be any type, so, but most of the time it's gonna be a stud string. And I don't need to include it really, but I'll just do for the sake. Yeah, so, and then here a value, Let's just do int for now. And so now what we can do is map one equals one, map two equals two, map three equals three and now like a map like this um, where do I have the map in here so it's not really a thing that you like um, it's not really like index based so like it doesn't really make sense to talk about the first, second element and stuff like that. It it does in a way, like but it's it it's not supposed to work like that. 
and um, I don't re and, and and the memory layout is not con uh, contiguous for a map. But now we have the power of traitors. So um, let's say let's make a map of string and string. So string and maybe it's a dictionary or something. Oh, a very bad dictionary. But let's just do um dict uh london equals cap capital of the uk then dict it should be capital madrid equals capital of spain and dict mm, just say that's ah, too long just say berlin berlin it's all the same length interesting capital of germany right so now um if you want to so for example, we're gonna do stud string input and stud c out. Um, look up a word in the dictionary. So stud c in input and then stud c out. Um, dict dict input I'm I think it's gonna do an exception if you do something which isn't supported so if I do five oh it just oh with add yeah again with add it'll do that but not not like this anyway so so but you can see this oh this might be useful so London capital of the UK right we can do this for everything. Madrid. Yeah, but now uh, we see the, like the usefulness of iterators. Like normally, you wouldn't like r be able to access uh, that stuff like sequentially. But with iterators, we can do something like maybe it's useful to look at every word in every word in the uh, dictionary. So you can do for auto const auto reference item in dictionary and so now a map holds values of type stood set right so let's see mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be a set. Yeah, pretty sure. And a set. Have it open in here. Yeah. So a set has two items in it: a key and a value. And if you wanna access them, then we'll just do stood see out okay so word item dot first I think like this definition item dot second so this should be it let's do a new line like this okay so Okay, it works. So, word Berlin definition capital of Germany. Okay, so um, this is a map, and like you might see how that is useful. Um, any other questions? Anything? Let's see CPP questions? Not really. If you have any questions, you can ask at any time. Alright, so. I don't think we have any for now. 
So, um, there are some things uh, like stud bit set and stud stack which are not really that useful but um, yeah, so you can look them up if you want but um, now we're gonna talk about algorithm it's this header in here and uh, algorithm header gives us a shit ton of stuff which is really useful really okay so but before we talk about algorithms we should talk about lambdas okay so some of you may know like lambda uh, as a Greek letter, um, which it is, but uh, why do why is it called lambda in C++? Uh, there's a thing called lambda calculus, uh, and it works with functions and stuff like that. But another name for lambdas is an anonymous function. So, um, and lambdas aren't that hard once you get them, but before you get them, it can be quite challenging. So a basic lambda looks like this. So what is this? This is an anonymous function. So this is a function, so I can return five, for example. Okay, so now I can assign this type to auto func equals. Uh, you'd use auto for this almost certainly because. Uh, you just auto for this because like a type is really complicated but what I can do now is that C out func and I'm just delete these things we don't need for now okay so oh yeah at the end of a lambda there has to be a if it's in one line, okay, so five, right? Um, we can so int i equals ten. So a, in a lambda, we have this in here. Okay, replit is loading. Lambdas are a bit hard, but we're gonna go about. We're just gonna quickly talk about like uh, them theoretically. And uh, after that, we're just gonna go into std algorithm and see how we might use them uh, in practice, which is like for std algorithm. So, okay. So now it loaded again. Alright. So let's do. And at the end of this lecture, I'm going to show you some fun thing I did with this thingy, or we did with the Harbringer, or oh, a guy on Discord too. Okay, so what you can do in here, this is a capture list. A capture list basically means uh, that you can access variables on the outside. So if I do, if I do this, this means capture by reference I can use just this, this means capture by reference all variables or I can do this capture by reference um, just i uh, anyway now I can do return i so now it's gonna say 10 uh, this might be dangerous like if you somehow were to return this in some form and it would have a reference against i so you gotta look out for that but it's not really a problem in most of the time and you can do stuff too like this for example so now if I do I have to remove this and now uh, it will execute it so func will be an int and yeah uh, and uh, yeah and you can actually have here parentheses too you can actually take an input uh, and this here can be an auto keyword I Auto, so I think it can be in 70, it can be in 20 for sure. I'm not sure right now if it is in, let's see, if it complains, then, oh, it works, so, yeah, so in lambdas it can be in auto, so. Now we see in here we have this lambda, we, we execute it in here and we give it as a parameter i. Just maybe a bit better if I 
use different names. So okay, so this lambda takes an x and returns it, and we call it with i. If we do justice, and we do, then we can call it again in here um, with i as a parameter, just to make it sure. Okay, so um, now why do we talk about this? Um, we're gonna see this once we get into this. So I'm just gonna so for each uh, it's not really um, that useful, but uh, what is useful is find. Okay, so and one thing which is important about um, the algorithms library, it doesn't use any container. It all uses iterators, which is great because, for example, if you have your own container type, which provides iterators, you can use many, if not all, the std algorithm functionality. Okay, but for example, if you do std, std vector int vec equals, um, let's just do maybe 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So one very useful function um, is std find. Okay, so how does it work? Vec dot begin, vec dot end, and now a value we look for. So if you want to do 11, so what does find return? find returns an iterator to the item if it has found it and if not if it hasn't found the item then it will return uh, the and iterator so you can do something like this if stood find is not equal to vec dot and uh, then you can stood see out found else std cout not found all right so not found all right so but if you do this 10 then it has found it and actually what we can do uh, in here is found at and then vec dot begin minus vec minus um, where it has found it. So I'll just do I'll just do auto auto i item equals vec dot begin. Okay, so and in here I can do some magic item equals this and so now let begin minus other way around, other way around, sorry. Item minus vec dot begin like this and a new line. Okay, if I run it and found at four. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, but we use zero indexing. So at index four, ten, which is right. So stood find is very useful. Uh, going down the list, uh, search, uh, same. You, you can look this up basically for any fill, uh, move. Uh, we're not gonna really move. Uh, talk about move semantics, but uh, copy, for example, is good. So just delete this. Snood vector int vec2, and I'll just construct it with size 7. We have 7 uh, height. Uh, we don't, I don't really have to, I can just do and then I can do std copy and now bear with me it should be 
copy and it should be vec dot begin vec dot end vec two dot begin vec two dot end should be like this for just an example you can of course copy to any like you could do vec dot and minus one for example uh, and then four also just in so I can do auto i in vec two stood c out i right so it should have copied Oh, yeah, let me just uh, input first, input last, output first, oh, yeah, so it doesn't actually take output last, so how how many you copy is determined by that, so, hopefully it will work, oh, no, 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 okay, so I have to do these are... I'll just do the same size and it should work, hopefully. Sorry for the inconvenience. Ah, of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, here, some example. Uh, this, is, this is a bit too near. Let, let me see. Input first, input last. Output first. It's the same s size. Or I can just construct this with vec vec dot size. This should work. Hopefully, if it doesn't, it's not that. It's not that bad. I'd prefer if it does though. And I prefer if replit wouldn't be making trouble mm. <sighs> of course it doesn't and why doesn't it <laughs> yeah anyway copy n but you I think you get like the basic idea of copy um, there are examples on the reference site so Anyway, I, I'm a bit sorry I messed this one up a bit, but there's copy n, which is much nicer if you ask me, um, which copies some a uh, which copies a uh, number of stuff. So if I do copy n, I want to copy the first three elements, and I will do just minus five in here mm -hmm. oh it works oh did it let's just mm. yeah this is a bit string in string out copy in in the begin for anyways anyways this it's, it's a bit confusing should work input first output iterator result the beginning of the destination range the beginning of the range the number of elements to copy I don't know if I just if I'm just constructing this wrong vec two dot resize if I messing up the construction. Oh now it works. Okay, so I I'm not sure how but I somehow messed up the construction and so if I do if I do in here vec dot resize vec vec two dot resize vec dot size and in here I'll do like dot size and basically I'll have copied the whole thing 
yes, we're printing vec2. And so this, okay, so I had it messed up a bit. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's copy. Fill uh, is the same idea, but you think, but I think with fill you can actually use a lambda, right? Const t. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you can't. That's for, that's for generate. Okay, so but, but with fill, you can do like um, with fill. Let's get rid of the vector two. We have this vector, and we'll just std fill vec dot begin vec dot end. And then some value on so minus one. And in here, I have to remove that too. And it'll be all minus one. Great. So let's fill. Then uh, transform. Uh, it's a bit more complicated, but generate. Generate that that one is great because it has a generator. And that generator, I the generator is has no value. But what this does now, we can use actual lambdas. Okay. So we have this. Stood generate. We'll just just stood generate n. Okay. So vec dot begin. Then maybe the first five things. And now we can use a now here we have to use a lambda which is actually really nice so I'll just do it like this and in here we can do n equals n equals zero then uh, in here I have to do this mutable thing because so that we can change this n but now I can do return n plus plus now if I print vec, then you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the rest. Because it went through this five times and started with 0 and 1, 2. Like, am I getting it, right? And But I can do, I can do lots of stuff. So I can do n plus equals, well, why not? <laughs> Uh, it's 3264, or I can do maybe just um, equals 1. I'll just do this for all and times equals 2. And so we're now we're getting the powers of 2. Right, 128. And so you're seeing how useful this could be. Okay, so uh, generate, generate n, remove again, works. Basically the same way as the ones before, but it removes with certain criteria. Swap, sample, rotate. All these are have their special uses, but they have their uses, which is the important stuff. So, um, but we can sort too. So um, this one is useful too. So, in sort in ascending order. Let me see if there is a is a sort with a comparator as far as, I'm, as I know. Yeah, Comparacom. Oh, yeah. So we can just do a basic sort. So if we have something like this, if you have 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you can do std sort vec dot begin vec dot and yeah and then we're gonna just print it again auto i in vec and stood c out so it will be sorted in ascending order okay but we can use a lambda again so, but this time it's gonna take um, two ints, 
it's gonna take two ints because we have sovereign vectors of int, right? So as an input in here, so int a, int b. I'm pretty sure if not, it's gonna complain really hard. And we can do return a of the element before. Uh, if we do this, let's see. Just it's a bit experimental for me. I expected this expression. Let's see. S sort random at last. Compare com. Execution policy. No, 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 no. no. Com comparison function object. I an object is set to turns compare const type a. I'll just do auto a auto b. Mm -hmm. Should work. Let's see. Why did I expect it? The next pressure. Let's just... Oh, that's a missing coma in here. Now it should work. Yes! And uh, it didn't sort it because it was already sorted, but if I sample flip the sign, then it'll sort it. Or I could do like some crazy stuff. So, um, I could do return a return a mod b also integer so it's gonna work is bigger than two I'm not really sure what this <laughs> how this is gonna look at three four five six seven eight two one yeah so if we'd have this if we had this going on for a bit longer think it would just cycle yeah but but uh, you see you can use this and if this if those weren't ints for example if I were just struct x struct is the same as a class but all its members are public by default int a okay so now we have a vector of x okay so this should work because um it should work, but now when you sort, we should do x dot a x uh, a dot a b dot a. And the names I've chosen are not. Um, mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is not really gonna work. Uh, let's do let's do it like this so let's give it the size and I hope it works this time because it didn't work x or we'll use to generate because you have stood generate and we'll resize it like dot resize five so to generate an vector begin five and now our lambda n equals zero function mutable return n plus plus this is very experimental, so from my side, so let's see. Mm, what's its problem? Exp oh, invalid operands of binary expression. Oh, yeah, here yeah, i dot a. So now it should work though. I think. I hope. Uh, oh, the errors are less soon. Oh yeah, return x 
N plus plus like this. Finally, now we generated with generated with zero and up to five, so it's one, two, three, four, five. And now if I flip the sign in here, yay, we reversed it. So yes, so we talked about algorithm. We talked. Let me just see. Um, yeah, Max, and we talked about basically everything we wanted to talk. I'm just gonna. What's a bit late this? Okay, so um, we have a question. I was a bit late to today's lecture with what has been discussed. We did iterators and we did containers, and this is it. And this is it for the whole course from C++. But um, as you all probably know already, if you have been watching before, is that. Um, it, this course will, or another series of courses will continue next week. So uh, stay put. And one thing I wanted to also say that we are doing like com a community project. So if you check out the Discord and check out the um, CPP project discussion channel and chime in, we are happy to take um, people just to do some fun stuff together. And that's it for today. Uh, thanks for attending.